Hi, I'm Jeremy Morgan, and today we're going to look at two popular AI voice cloning products. Now, this is a little different because most of the AI tools I talk about on this channel require technical knowledge right away. You have to know some Python, maybe have a big GPU, etc. Usually I'm taking some open source tools and building stuff out. But the tools I'm talking about in this video, anyone can use. They are services that are hosted in the cloud, and they're super easy to use. I'll compare the two and show you how you can use them too. So here's a sample of me talking. Hi, I'm Jeremy Morgan. This is my voice using an awesome tool from Eleven Labs. Creepy, right? A little bit, but it's useful too. Let's get started. Welcome, Welcome to the Voice Cloning Showdown with Eleven Labs and Play HD. All right, let's meet the contenders. In this video, I'll compare Eleven Labs, which is a tool known for natural sounding voice synthesis. It's very popular among professionals for high quality audio projects. And Play.ht. Now, it's known for being very user friendly and has extensive language support. So, you aren't relegated to just English. We're going to see which one sounds more like me. But first, I'll quickly show you how to set these up so that you can clone your own voice and do podcasts, instructions, voicemails, whatever. Both of these use the same basic process. Step one, you sign up for an Eleven Labs account. Then record and upload your voice samples. So you want these to be really clear and you want to have some length to it. They can be as low as 30 minutes, but up to hours and hours and hours. Then they will process these files, and in a few hours, your voice will be ready. Then you can enter your text to generate speech in your cloned voice. Now, PlayHT is exactly the same. You create an account on Play.ht, record or upload voice samples, and here you can record a minimum of 30 minutes up to hours again. And then they will process the files, and in a few hours, your voice will be ready. And then you can use the text editor to generate audio with your voice clone. And it's that simple. You can record anywhere from 30 minutes to up to hours of talking. And the more data you upload, the better the quality will be. Because you're training this tool to guess what you sound like when you say certain words. So the more examples you have, the better. Now, I uploaded five and a half hours of talking to each of these tools. I took audio that I liked from some of my YouTube videos and my courses, and then I uploaded them to these tools. Now, one advantage of doing this is five and a half hours is a lot of talking. It's plenty of data to get my voice right. One disadvantage is that it's my presentation voice. I mean, it's not my conversation voice. Hi, honey. Have the dogs been let out to go potty? I'll be upstairs in a yeah, minute. Yeah, so it's not perfect. All right, let's see which one sounds more like me. Let's try both tools with an introduction to a video. And this is obviously my presentation voice that I use every day. Here's my real voice. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. Today we will evaluate two different AI voice cloning tools. I'll show you what they sound like and we'll compare some of the features. Okay, and that was my natural voice, obviously. Here's Eleven Labs. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. Today we will evaluate two different AI voice cloning tools. I'll show you what they sound like and we'll compare some of the features. Okay, great. And here is play.ht. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. Today we will evaluate two different AI voice cloning tools. I'll show you what they sound like and we'll compare some of the features. Okay, so I do like the Eleven Labs demo better. It sounds a lot more like me, like much more natural. But hold on, there's a lot more to evaluate here before you make your decision. And I'll talk about the costs and features involved and stuff like that, but let's run some samples just for fun. Now this is a very typical narration from a course. And here's my natural voice. As we've journeyed through the landscape of generative AI tools for Python development, we've repeatedly encountered a crucial skill, the art of creating effective prompts. This practice, known as prompt engineering, is the linchpin that connects human intent with AI capability. Now let's dive deeper into what prompt engineering entails and why it's become so essential in our AI-assisted development workflows. Okay, and that's my natural voice. Now let's go ahead and see what the tools build. As we've journeyed through the landscape of generative AI tools for Python development, we've repeatedly encountered a crucial skill, the art of crafting effective prompts. This practice, known as prompt engineering, is the linchpin that connects human intent with AI capability. 
Let's dive deeper into what prompt engineering entails and why it's become so essential in our AI-assisted development workflows. As we've journeyed through the landscape of generative AI tools for Python development, we've repeatedly encountered a crucial skill. The art of crafting effective prompts, this practice known as prompt engineering, is the linchpin that connects human intent with AI capability. Let's dive deeper into what prompt engineering entails and why it's become so essential in our AI-assisted development workflows. Now here's what I noticed right away. The 11 Labs one sounds more like me, in my opinion. It's a lot less robotic, but it's really boring. So I'm not sure why, but it kind of puts me to sleep. And hey, maybe I really do sound like that and I put my students to sleep. I don't know. The Play.ht one is more robotic, but it's also more energetic too. So thankfully you can make some adjustments with 11 Labs, but these are some trade-offs that you have to consider. Now let's test a few different ranges here. How about joy? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. My daughter just made the varsity basketball team. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. My daughter just made the varsity basketball team. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. My daughter just made the varsity basketball team. Okay, so play HT sounded a bit awkward there. I'll admit it. Let's try something like sadness. Oh man, I'm really bummed out. My truck broke down again. I should have bought a Ford. Oh man, I'm really bummed out. My truck broke down again. I should have bought a Ford. Oh man, I'm really bummed out. My truck broke down again. I should have bought a Ford. Okay, that time I think play.ht won that one. It sounds a bit more like me. Let's try something like surprised. Oh wow, my Windows computer ran all day without needing to be rebooted. This must be some kind of miracle. Oh wow, my Windows computer ran all day without needing to be rebooted. This must be some kind of miracle. Oh wow, my Windows computer ran all day without needing to be rebooted. This must be some kind of miracle. Okay, I'm gonna say this is a bit of a tie. Uh, both of those sound pretty much like me. Let's throw in some tongue twisters. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Clearly, the AI can handle tongue twisters better than I can, so fair enough. But what about homophones? I can lead if you get the lead out, and the bandage was wound around the wound. I can lead if you get the lead out. The bandage was wound around the wound. I can lead if you get the lead out. The bandage was wound around the wound. Okay, this one was a tie. Now, it did infer wound versus wound, but lead versus lead, eh, fair enough, it's a tie. Let's try pronunciation. Tchaikovsky's ballet featured in the Bolshoi Theater. Tchaikovsky's ballet featured in the Bolshoi Theater. Tchaikovsky's ballet featured in the Bolshoi Theater. <laughs> Great job. So they both did really good on that one. But here's a good challenge that I know we can hang them up with. Emphasis. I didn't say he stole the money. So this can be emphasized a ton of different ways, right? So I didn't say he stole the money or I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money or I didn't say he stole the money, right? Totally different meanings for all of those. So technically there's no way that AI can truly infer the intent without more context. Now don't let the hype fool you. AI still has tons of limitations, but let's see what it sounds like. I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Ah, pretty neutral as we'd expect. But what happens if we capitalize the input text? I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Well, as it turns out, we can't really emphasize things with either of these tools. So that is a definite limitation. And they aren't perfect by any means, but they're pretty dang good if you ask me. Now let's shift gears a little bit and take a look at the cost and features to help you choose which one of these tools that you should use. In my opinion, 11 Labs sounds more like me. It sounds more natural, less robotic, but also more sleepy and boring somehow. And Play.ht sounds more robotic, it sounds more AI, but it's higher energy. Now I know what you're thinking. And yes, I'm considering feeding some Play HT samples into 11 Labs to mess with the training data and give it more energy. Why not? Uh, I'll do that and I'll put the results on this channel. Now let's talk about features. 
Eleven Labs has a ton of features, so let's look at them. So if you want to go beyond just cloning your own voice, you can use several of their built-in voices, and they're awesome. There's a great selection of voices here. You can do sound effects like a car whizzing by. Of course, I'd choose that, right? And this is totally awesome. So instead of trying to record uh, all these different sound effects and trying to be a sound person or purchasing some expensive sound library, you can just generate them with this tool and they're really good. And now I can add a laugh track to all of my videos. So how do you know if ChatGPT is lying? Well, it's generating text. Thank you, I'll be here all week. Try the veal. It has a dubbing studio where you can translate your content across 29 languages. Now I haven't tried this out yet, but it looks pretty awesome. I would love to translate all of my content into 29 different languages, so I'll definitely have to try that out. Now it has a feature called Audio Native that reads off your web page into an audio file, which I'm definitely considering for jeremymorgan.com. Again, I haven't tried this out. And it has a voice isolator, which is great if you have a terrible recording environment. And if you've ever done any kind of recording, you know that it's very, very difficult. Need to remove background noise from your video? Use our new voice isolator model for crystal clear audio every time. So I haven't tried this one out much either, but it sounds pretty awesome. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to intentionally make noises and stuff like that and make a YouTube video out of it because it sounds pretty awesome. Now let's talk about play.ht and let's look at some of play.ht's features. So play.ht does voice cloning as I've already showed, and it's really good. It has more high energy feel and it does sound a lot like me. Now play.ht has a ton of different voices to choose from and even has voices from different languages. It has way more available voices to choose from if you want to generate audio from someone else. And they sound really good and in a bunch of different languages. And play 3.0 introduces even more languages and features. Honestly, this stuff blows 11 labs out of the water. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely need to choose this. So there are fewer features with play.ht, but what they do, they do really well. Let's talk about pricing. Okay, so this is pretty important because there are a lot of differences here. With 11 labs, you can start for free. It includes 10 minutes of text-to-speech a month, which is good for trying things out. If you wanna get serious, you should probably go to the creator level at least, that gives you 100 minutes a month. And it's on sale right now at the time of this recording for $11 a month. It's usually $22 a month, which is pretty reasonable. Now, if you have a ton of stuff to produce, the pro account at $99 a month isn't bad. And these are all monthly prices, by the way. If you can afford to make an upfront investment, the yearly prices are cheaper. Make sure to evaluate it thoroughly before making that decision because $1,000, that really isn't pocket change for anyone. With play.ht, the pricing is cheaper for sure. The free plan gives you an instant voice clone, which is based on 30 minutes of speech. It has 12,500 characters, which honestly I have no idea what that equals in time, but it's probably roughly the same. But creator at $39 a month gives you a lot more and $99 a month is unlimited characters. If you switch to annually, it gets much cheaper and their biggest best plan is available for $348 a year. This is unlimited clones, unlimited time, and access to all voices and languages. This is a tremendous deal, and this is what I chose to do for my personal account. So what's the final word? If you're very serious about generating voices for podcasts, audiobooks, or courses, whatever, Eleven Labs is probably better for you. It's far more accurate and has a ton of cool features, but you will pay for them. If you're on a budget, but still need these services, play.ht is well worth the money. You can also do podcasts and audiobooks, courses, etc., whatever, for a fraction of the cost. And the difference is close enough that it will probably work well for a lot of people. So if you have big projects with big budgets and you want the best, go with 11 Labs.
If you have budget constraints but still want great results and unlimited usage, Play.ht is the best. Now, I hope this has helped you out. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you like stuff like this. I evaluate generative AI tools like these ones. I cover tools that anyone can use up to the ones that require much more technical skills like stable diffusion, PyTorch, transformers, etc. If you like this kind of content, follow me. Also, I wrote a book about generative AI. It's almost done. I've included a link in the description so that you can check it out. It's a book about leveraging generative AI for software developers. Instead of letting AI replace you, you can use it as a force multiplier to become the best developer you can be. Check it out. Thank you for watching.